Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Smith. I work at uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm a radiologist there. And on behalf of the SAR, I'm going to talk to you today about cystic renal masses. So I have a number of disclosures, but none of them are relevant to this current talk, so I'll move through this quickly. So our objectives are to review the history of the Bosniak classification system, review Bosniak basics like is it a cyst, review imaging features of the Bosniak classification system, and discuss the Bosniak classification of cystic renal masses of uh, version 2019. So in the background, renal cysts are common. Uh, some report that 50% of 50-year-olds have renal cysts, and I think we may even see more than that when we consider subcentimeter cysts. The vast majority of these, meaning more than 99% of these, are benign. Now, if you look at all primary renal cancers, 5% of them are cystic renal cancers, but the truth is the vast majority of renal cysts are benign. So what kind of renal cysts do we see? Most of what we're seeing are benign cysts, most of these epithelial or fibrous cysts, but there are things like cystic nephroma, mixed epithelial and stromal tumors, oncocytoma, and cyst mimics like abscesses, hematomas, and calocyl diverticulums. And on the malignant side, we're familiar with these. These, are, these mimic to some extent solid with clear cell, papillary, unclassified, mixed RCC, multilocular cystic RCC, etc. So cysts can be a number of different things, and our role as a radiologist is to identify, classify, and assist in the management of renal cystic lesions. So let's say you came across this patient, 55-year-old male, healthy, with an indeterminate renal mass. And you can kind of look at this and see that there is a complex renal mass here, multiseptated, maybe some calcification in it, and definitely appears to be enhancing. How would you describe this, and what do you recommend? We'll come back to this case later. So the Bosniak renal cyst classification system was first described by Morton Bosniak, which is where the name came from, in 1986, and it was modified in 1997, and we'll come back to it later, but there's a new version for 2019. We're going to cover this version uh, because it's the one that's in current state-of-the-art practice, and the new version is at this point more of a research tool, eventually may transition into a clinical tool. So for simplicity, I'm just showing the contrast-enhanced phases, but in order to apply the Bosniak system, you know you need to use a multiphasic renal CT. So the classification system categorizes cystic renal masses into groups, and we have them listed here. These are 1 through 4, with a 2F group for follow-up, and they're based on imaging features associated with malignancy on surgical pathology. So the malignancy rates fall something like this. It's well established that Bosniak 3s are 50% malignant and Bosniak 4s are 90% malignant. More recent data suggests that Bosniak 2F renal cystic masses could be have a 25% malignancy rate, somewhere in that order. And the original management plan described for these was to ignore Bosniak 1s and 2s. The follow-up for 2F indicated active surveillance, and originally we were thinking surgery for both 3s and 4s, and we'll talk about group 3 as we go through this talk, that that probably should be changed. So this is a, from a paper from uh, Stuart Silverman and group, and it describes the Bosniak classification system and the imaging features, and we'll go through each of these features. So this is just an overview. It's something that you do need to memorize as a radiologist. So the first step are the Bosniak classification basics. So what do we need to do? There's going to be three steps. We're going to get to two of them fairly quickly, and we'll come back to a third later. The first question, is it a cyst? So how do you define a cyst? Most of us know this. If on CT, if it's fluid attenuating, meaning minus 9 to plus 20 Hounsfield units, then it's a cyst. And that's true on a non-contrast, which we show here, 14 Hounsfield units. So that we would say is a cyst. And we could classify that as benign, just statistically. And then also here, we can measure this one, 16 Hounsfield units. That falls within the range. Definitely a cyst. It turns out that a hyperdense mass that does not enhance is also a cyst. So if we look at this mass alone on a contrast-enhanced study, it measures 40 Hounsfield unit. We're not real clear, is that an enhancing mass or a hyperdense cyst? But if you had the full renal CT, the non-contrast on the left, and a nephrographic phase on the right, you could measure this and see that it really doesn't change much in enhancement. So that kind of begs the question, how do you define enhancement? I would say enhancement is 20 Hounsfield unit or greater from the non-enhanced phase, so an increase from there. Non-enhancing is therefore 10 or less, and indeterminate's in the range of 11 to 19 Hounsfield units. Usually when it's indeterminate, we'll recommend an additional study, something like a contrast MRI or contrast-enhanced ultrasound. So what do we use ultrasound for, uh, and how do we define a cyst? Well, there, of course, it's anechoic or a hypochoic mass with increased through transmission. So in this case, we're seeing a simple cyst 
here in the lower pole of the kidney with increase through transmission. Ultrasound is useful for di differentiating a solid mass from a cyst and also for identification of septations and wall thickening. Contrast enhanced ultrasound can take it a step further where we can substage Bosniak 2F3 and 4 renal cysts. And that's kind of what's shown here is a cystic mass in the kidney with just a few septations. We see these septations better with contrast enhanced ultrasound. And in this case, they actually enhanced. And so this was an upgraded cyst which actually gets to one of the disadvantages of contrast enhanced ultrasound. It is a focused exam, that's what disadvantage in that you can't necessarily look at both kidneys in one single exam. It is possible to do both, you'd have to do two injections. Uh, it also has higher inter-observer variability and there's frequent up classification. It's kind of one of these things where it's ultra sensitive to contrast. So the truth is probably most of these septations enhance at some level, they're just not all visible at CT and perhaps ultrasound is a bit too sensitive for that. The advantages, though, are no radiation and no need to consider uh, glomerular filtration rate or look at kidney function because the contrast is safe. MRI is a mass with predominantly non-enhancing components. So usually when I ask a junior resident or even sometimes a fellow, how do you define a cyst? They'll say something like this, hey, a cyst is T1 um, hypo-intense and T2 hyper-intense. And I say, hmm, I'm not so sure about that. What about this thing? Could this be a cyst? because this one is T1 hyperintense and T2 hypointense. Notice that this is actually the CSF, so this is T2 hypointense. Let's go back to the one on the left first. The real way you want to define a cyst is that it's not enhancing. So you could look here and compare here and do measurements. A 15% change in intensity between pre and post, anything 15% or greater is enhancement. This would have essentially no change. But another way to do it is with the subtraction imaging, which I show you on the left here. It's a big black hole on subtraction imaging, so it's clearly a cyst. Let's move over to the right here. This lesion will be a little bit harder. It's bright on pre-contrast, it's kind of bright here. It perceives like it's not as bright, but if you measure it, you'd notice no change. And you can confirm that on subtraction, where it's also a black hole. So we can confirm that both of these are cysts. The point of this is to say that it's not the T1 or T2 pre-contrast signal characteristics that matter, it's whether it enhances or not. And so this does not have enhancement, at least centrally, so therefore it is a cystic mass, both of them. Ultras, or sorry, MRI is more sensitive than CT for detecting enhancement, and it's useful for further characterizing indeterminate enhancement on CT, the ones that we said were in the 11 to 19 Hounsfield unit range. So its advantages are no radiation, no need for, to consider GFR when using macro, macrocyclic agents. Uh, you can assess both kidneys and other structures as well, like if you needed to look for lymph nodes and so forth. The disadvantages is higher cost and a higher technical failure rate than CT. So once we get past the first question, is it a cyst? The next question is, is the imaging sufficient to categorize the cystic lesion? So I get this a lot. Someone says, hey, Dr. Smith, come take a look at this lesion. What Bosnian classification would you put this in? I would say, oh, hold, hold on, let me, let me go through my steps here. Is this a cyst in the first place? Yes, this is definitely a cyst. It measures fluid and attenuation, but I'm stuck. I can't tell you if this has enhancing septations or what else uh, um, is going on here. I don't know if these are naturally hyperdense walls or if they're enhancing. So you'd need the multiphasic CT. So the tip is when you see a cyst with thickened walls or septations that needs further characterization by a multiphasic CT or MRI or contrast enhanced ultrasound. And that's what was done here. So what would this lesion be? Well, we'll come back to this lesion in a bit. But you need the full multiphasic CT to be able to characterize this. Let's go through each of the different classification systems. <clears throat> So here's a Bosniak 1 renal cyst, and these are, they measure fluid and attenuation right from the get-go. They don't have any septations that you can perceive, and the walls are really thin. So that's a simple cyst. Essentially, this is a Bosniak 1. 100% of these are benign. We ignore them. You don't need any additional follow-up. And you just report it as a simple cyst. It's not recommended to use the term Bosniak 1. Only a radiologist or urologist would know what you're talking about if you did that. So just say simple cyst. Let's move on to Bosniak 2s. Look at this lesion. It measures fluid and attenuation, and it has some thin septations with fine calcification, just a few septations. We only see one here. Maybe that's all they have. That would be a Bosniak II renal cyst. Almost all of these are benign. I suppose it's possible some of these aren't. There's old literature talking about some malignancy rates in those, but that's before the 2F category. So I really think these are considered benign. We can ignore them all. They certainly don't behave malignant. Here's another one. We saw this lesion earlier. 
<clears throat> this is a hyperdense cyst. It does not enhance. It measures above fluid attenuation, but there's no enhancement. And you'd want to move that around and make sure it's homogeneous. But if it's homogeneous and it measures, uh, and you don't see any uh, perceivable or measurable enhancement, you can be sure that this is a Bosniak II renal cyst. It's a hyperdense cyst. I like to report these as benign, and in parentheses, Bosniak II renal cyst. The benign communicates to most of the world exactly what I want to say, and if it just happens to go to a urologist or someone ends up following this up for some other reason, maybe they get another follow-up CT, everybody sees that I'm thinking this is a Bosniak II renal cyst. How about this one here? A little bit different. This one does measure fluid and attenuation, but we can perceive multiple septations in there. They don't really enhance. I don't even really necessarily see perceivable enhance on this one, but there are multiple septations, so that would make this a Bosniak 2F renal cyst. They have no measurable enhancement in them. And about 25% or up to 25% of these are malignant. And so we generally observe these and put them under active surveillance. The current recommendations are to do the next CT or MRI at six months and then at one year and annually thereafter. I personally do not see a reason for the six month CT. No one has ever died from a Bosniak 2F renal cyst. They can progress into threes but that's not super important to detect that at six months versus a year. Here's another 2F renal cyst. You can see that this one measures fluid. Remember, we're going through that same step process. Is it a cyst first? Do I have the material to classify this? Yes, I have a multiphasic CT. It has thick calcifications in the wall. So that makes this, and it has some wall thickening as well. And you could probably argue there's perceivable enhancement maybe in that wall uh, on, the, on the nephrographic phase compared to the unenhanced. Let's move on to Bosniak 3 renal cysts. <clears throat> this one does indeed measure fluid attenuation. It does not have enhancement in the portion that I've shown you, but if I measure this thickened septation here, it definitely has enhancement. It went from 32 to 82, so that's 50 pounds per unit. It's certainly more than 20. So this has measurable enhancing components in, a, in, in walls or septa, in this case in the septa. And it's a Bosniak 3 renal cyst. 50% of these are malignant. And so the original recommendations were surgery, if they could go to surgery, and that's going to change. It already has changed. We'll talk about that in a bit. There's no non-invasive means of differentiating benign from malignant Bosnac 3 renal lesions, so that's kind of scary. <clears throat> okay, here's another cystic lesion. If we first look at this, it looks like, oh, there's all this crazy enhancement in here, and there will be enhancement. I'll show you that in a moment. First, we want to document that it is indeed a renal cyst, which is what we see here. But if you look at this coronal view, you can see we're really just slicing through some areas. These are really thin septations that are just sort of volume averaging for us. But we can indeed measure enhancement in them, 22 to 52, so that enhances, that makes this a Bosniak 3 renal cyst. How about this one? First step, again, would be is this a cystic lesion? Yes, it is. More than 75% of the lesion measures fluid. And then we can measure this nodular component. Clearly this enhances. You can just see that that enhances quite well. So this enhancing nodular component is what defines the Bosniak 4 renal cyst. And about 90% of these are malignant. So that's why they go to surgery. There's another kind of version of this that I like to show you. I can show you many different examples of this. Let's look at this one here. At first glance, you know, are you even thinking that this is a cystic renal mass? You see this mass that's back here. If we measure parts of this, it's hyperdense. It's not fluid in, in the sense of uh, fluid attenuation, but it doesn't enhance. So it has necrotic components or components that uh, do not enhance, and it also has this other component that clearly does enhance, 28 to 50 Houndsville units ultimately. So in this case, there's the enhancing nodule, and this enhancing nodular component means that it's a Bosniak 4 renal cyst. You could argue, uh, and this is the necrosis, you could argue that this is a solid necrotic renal cell carcinoma. Kind of depends on how much of this is solid. Uh, people define cystic renal masses differently. Probably the most widely accepted definition now is if 75% of a lesion or, um, or more is non-enhancing. So if you thought this was a small enhancing component, you could classify this as a Bosniak 4 renal cyst and you wouldn't be wrong to do so. That makes us think about how do malignant renal cysts form. <clears throat> One way they form is as a baby malignancy that just grows up. So this was a malignancy to start, intrinsic malignant cystic growth. Another thing, and that's an example here of a multi-cystic RCC in the, in, the, in the image here. How about this one? This is a benign cyst, but maybe it has some clear cells lining it, and some of those clear cells go bad and form these nodules. And so we have another one forming here as well, 
that's another way that you can get a malignant renal cyst. So no uh, new malignancy in a benign cyst in this case. And that's kind of the example that we saw before. The scary one is this one. Okay, this is a solid renal mass. It's really aggressive. It's trying to do bad things and it becomes necrotic and it's got nodular walls and so forth. So this is the one we worry about, necrosis of a solid RCC. Maybe in the examples I've shown here, you're like, oh, I could easily differentiate these, but I'm not so sure we can. It's the ones on the far right that definitely need to come out. I'm not sure that the cystic clear cell in the middle needs to come out until those nodules get bigger, but I wouldn't mess around with these because it's really hard to tell if this is a necrotic RCC or if it's just some sort of uh, tiny little nodules growing in an otherwise benign cyst. This does raise the point though of why we don't necessarily biopsy these concern about spilling cells, but there's also concern that what if you biopsy the benign portion of the lesion and that's what you got back? That wouldn't be very helpful to you. So we don't typically uh, biopsy Bosniac renal cysts. Let's go through the classification system. Let's talk about calcification. That's relevant to the two through four level lesions. Thin or slightly thickened calcifications for a Bosniac II thick or nodular calcifications for a Bosniak 2F. It turns out that calcification is not really associated with malignancy, which is one of the reasons we have revised the Bosniak classification system, but this is how it stood at the time. How about septations? Septations are relevant from two through four as well. There's usually few thin septations with that not really well defined, uh, but few, uh, exactly what does few mean in this case. And then two Fs would have multiple septa. They could have perceivable enhancement, but not measurable enhancement. And then a three is thick enhancing septa, with a four having enhancing nodules along the septa. That's kind of what defines the four. So the really the most important feature of these cysts is enhancement. And that has been associated with malignancy. And that's really relevant to the Bosniak 2F through 4 categories, with the 2F having perceivable but not measurable enhancement. What does that mean? Well, it hasn't been fully defined, but I would say you can't use a single pixel to determine enhancement. I like a reasonable sized region of interest or ROI for me to be able to determine if something is measurable. Here's the Bosniak 3 class, and that has measurable enhancement in thick septae or walls. And then, as we said, a Bosniak 4 has enhancing nodules along the septae or walls. There's a couple of things that increase the risk of malignancy. So look at this patient in their right kidney. They have a solid renal mass, perhaps easiest to see here. I wouldn't call this a cystic renal mass. It has an area of necrosis, but it's a solid renal mass. And on the other side, it has a cystic renal mass. <clears throat> if I told you there were places that we could measure enhancement in this lesion, you would say that's a Bosniak 3. So they have a solid renal neoplasm and a Bosniak 3. Is there a Bosniak 50-50 chance of malignancy? No, it turns out that they're both clear cell in this case. And it turns out that if you have a Bosniak 2F or 3 in a patient with an existing solid renal mass or history of renal cell carcinoma, it's more likely to be malignant. So in this case, you, the, the patient might want to consider you know, bilateral partial nephrectomies. That, that's a big discussion to have. It's not something we need to get into. But we do know that this one has an increased risk of malignancy. There's another scenario with that. So let's look at this lesion real quickly. Is it a cyst? Yes, it is a cyst. Do we have what we need to classify it? Yes, we do. Let's say that we measured it and we didn't feel that this was enhancing at this time. We, we could say, no, nah, I don't really think this is enhancing. You might then call this a Bosniak 2F renal cystic lesion. If it came back and you again measured areas and said, geez, now I think it is enhancing, you have now upclassified this lesion to a Bosniak 3 lesion. When we upclassify, in this case, this one was a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. When we upclassify lesions or when they progress, they're more likely malignant. So a normal Bosniak 2F has a 25% malignancy. Once they upclassify or like this, they have an 82% chance of malignancy, which is really approaching that of a small solid renal neoplasm or a Bosniak 4 uh, cystic renal mass. So just be aware that that is also an increased risk for malignancy. We're going to get on to something else there. Here's another patient. You get called over and they say, what do you think this is? Could you help me with this? And you say, oh, well, uh, I know the first step I need to do is determine if this is a cyst. So you do that and you measure it and you say, well, I got to 20, but it started at 18. So this is non-enhancing. Yes, this is a cystic renal lesion. And then you say, is the imaging sufficient? Hey, well, in this case, we've got a multiphasic uh, CT. So yes, I certainly could categorize this lesion. But the question is, do you want to? And that's the last step. The last step is, do you want to do that? Because you could measure it. And you could say, oh, Jesus really enhances. So you might be thinking in your head Bosniak 3, but you need to ask the last question, is it an abscess or a calocele diverticulum? If you look at the history at the top, 
43-year-old female with hematuria and back pain, and this came in the ER. Turns out they had pyelonephritis, and this was a renal abscess. And you might pick up on that by the haziness around the lesion and so forth, but don't necessarily count on that. The real point is to look at the history and really think about it and say, geez, I don't know. And if you really can't tell, then you can entertain the possibility of both. But in this case, it was indeed a renal abscess. Okay, how about this lesion? <clears throat> if we had to go through our steps again here, we see a lesion. Is it a cystic lesion? Let's go ahead and measure it to be sure. Yes, it's definitely a cystic lesion. It does have some calcification in it. We could look for enhancement. Do we have enough imaging to categorize this cystic lesion? Well, we don't have a three phase, but we've got non-contrast and contrast, so we probably could categorize this lesion. Turns out in this case we had one more phase, an excretory phase. And what you see is this cystic lesion is accumulating contrast. It's in direct communication with the collecting system. So by definition, this is a calocele diverticulum. So we have to ask that. So the questions are, is it a cyst? Is the imaging sufficient? And is this an abscess or calocele diverticulum? Yes, this one's a calocele diverticulum. So don't Bosniak classify it. Okay, let's go back to this one. This is the healthy person, so not going to be a renal abscess. 55-year-old uh, male with an indeterminate renal mass. How would you describe this, and what do you recommend? Well, I'd first measure it and say, geez, I think this is a cystic renal lesion. So yes, we feel confident about that. I usually tell people, hey, this is not the only cyst. What do, what do I do? Is this one cystic lesion or two adjacent cysts? If you can't tell, it's probably better to consider it all one cystic mass and therefore consider these as septations. They do have calcification in them. And we could actually measure a spot where it went from 37 to 105, so it's enhancing. I don't think that those are nodular, so to me, this meets the definition of a Bosniak 3 renal cystic mass, which has a 50-50 chance of being malignant, right? We were covering this early. So you would think if you asked a patient or I asked you, hey, you have something in you. It's a 50% chance it's malignant. There's no other test for me to answer if it's malignant or not. Would you like to have this taken out? Of course the person's going to say they'd like to have it taken. You just told me it's 50%. 50-50 chance is malignant, doctor. <clears throat> well, there's more to the story. Okay, if you really ask, what do we care about, is things like this. Does it metastasize? Well, there's only one reported metastasis from a Bosniak 3 in the literature in a multi-institutional study that I happen to participate in. And that person had oligometastatic disease and was cured after resection of those metastases to the lung. So the point is, it's extremely rare that these things metastasize if you follow them in the short term. And nobody's done a really long-term study to follow these like 20 years or something. But in the short term, they're really low risk. They're very indolent. Think about what a pathologist does to determine if something's malignant. They ask about nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio and things like that. Does that matter to a patient? When a patient asks me, is this malignant? I think they're asking, is this going to hurt me? Is this going to get locally invasive? Or is this going to metastasize? Generally speaking, no. It's not going to do any of those things. And it turns out that there, the moderate to severe complication rate from partial nephrectomy is 20%. That's pretty high. One in five chance you're going to have something pretty serious happen to you if you get this resected. 20% of all Bosniak 3 cystic renal masses are per permanently down classified if moved on, on the active surveillance. So short-term active surveillance seems really obvious to me because some of these are going to get down classified into something that's not even worrisome any longer. Um, so th th this is part of the argument. We've even done a certain... Uh, a study where we looked at active surveillance and nephron sparing surgery, a cost-effective analysis of that. And active surveillance is more cost-effective than nephron sparing surgery for patients with a Bosniak 2F or 3 cystic renal mass. We already do active surveillance for 2F. These kind of studies indicate that we probably should be doing active surveillance for Bosniak 3 renal cysts. It's more complicated than that, though. Patients are complicated. If they're 30 years old, does active surveillance make sense? If they're 55 years old, Maybe it does make sense. So it really depends, and it's not our call as radiologists. That's not something we can see on the images. So we have this patient. It turns out they underwent a laparoscopic partial nephrectomy. It was complicated by multi-organ failure. They had a myocardial infarction with acute respiratory and renal failure. So multi-organ renal failure, 48 days in the hospital, $228,000 hospital bill. Guess what this one was? Benign fibrous cyst. <clears throat> now, I hate using one single example as reasons to drive management, so I'm just using this as an illustrative point. I could have told you this was malignant. It's still not worth taking out, obviously, in that patient if they had all of these things happen to them, and that's the point, is to think that 
surgery has its own potential harms, and perhaps those harms outweigh the risks of these rather indolent lesions. Even though we say 50% of them are malignant, most of them do, don't do much, especially if you follow them on active surveillance. Now, if they grew on active surveillance, that'd be a different story. So I would argue that active surveillance is probably now the standard of care for most Bosniak III renal cystic masses, but again, it depends on the age of the patient and the clinical scenario. So here's some phrasing that I think you should use. For a Bosniak 1, you should never say that. You should just say simple cyst. For Bosniak 2, I like benign Bosniak 2 renal cyst. It kind of conveys everything I need to. The rest of these are cystic renal masses, and that's how you would describe them. At this point, we, that, that we would call them a Bosniak 3 cystic renal mass. <clears throat> so how would I describe this, and what would I make as a recommendation for this case? I'd say this is a Bosniak 3 cystic renal mass. Bosniak 3 masses have an intermediate probability of being malignant. If not already obtained, consider urology consultation. It's not appropriate for me to say surgery. I don't even think that's the best scenario in most patients. I really need to know what's going on with this patient. How old are they? Are they a surgical candidate? Do they have other comorbidities? What's going on in their life? That's not for me to call. That's why I send these to the urologist who interacts with the patient. So, okay, let's go some, but there are some problems with the Bosniak classification system. One, it has high inter-observer variability. You and I may not agree when I show you something and say, this is a 2F, and you say, no, Dr. Smith, that's a 3. That's, a, that's part of the problem. Um, there's unclear definitions on what perceived enhancement means, what do few septations mean, and there's a high prevalence of malignancy of Bosniak 3 renal cystic masses. Is there a way that we could improve that? These are the driving forces behind why we did a new classification system. It's more complicated, unfortunately, which is why we are not going to have time in this lecture to go over the individual details. There are differences between how it's looked at on CT versus MRI. It really incorporates a lot of current knowledge, and it is worth reading this article. And this may soon be standard to care for us. But right now, it's more of a research and a potential recommendation. Things that were clarified in the new system are what does few and multiple septations mean? Three or fewer, and more than the four or more as multiple. Uh, wall thickness becomes more important. In fact, trumping, and to some extent, enhancement because it's easier and quantifiable for us to look at wall thickness potentially. Sure, it's hard to measure a millimeter versus two, but once we get up into these thicker ones that matter, we can certainly measure that. And that's true for both walls and septations. And certainly we can look at nodularity and we've defined what kind of nodules are the bad kind that would move you from a Bosniak 3 to a Bosniak 4. So that's a brief overview of the new Bosniak classification system for 2019 that has not yet uh, made its way into clinical practice. So in summary, we talked about Bosniak classification system. We said, hey, how would you describe this? What would you recommend? And went through that throughout, throughout the entire lecture coming down to a final recommendation. We went through the basics of it. Remember, is it a cyst? Is the imaging sufficient to categorize the cystic lesion? Meaning do you have multiphasic CT, MRI, or contrast enhanced ultrasound? Is it an abscess or calyx sealed diverticulum? Because we don't want to get fooled into Bosniak classifying one of those. We really went over the classification system in detail. You obviously need a true multiphasic exam to be able to do that. This is just representative images. We talked about using the term cystic renal mass, talk, maybe using the word benign before Bosniak II, talked about active surveillance, probably the new standard of care, but not necessarily for everyone, but probably now uh, more favorable than using surgery for Bosniak III because they're relatively indolent. And then we briefly covered that there is a new Bosniak classification system version 2019, and we called it that because maybe we'll have to update it in 2020. If enough research comes in, we will. I doubt it'll be that soon, but clearly this will need additional mod modification. And we wanted to credit Dr. Bosniak because this system works. It does a great job of stratifying risk. Uh, the management parts of that are going to change over time, as are the features. But Dr. Bosniak definitely set us on the right path for going through this, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture.